Hi and welcome back to our course Classical Electromagnetism. So we are now starting the second part of this course and we will start with the fourth chapter which is all about magnetostatics. So before we start, uh, formally start this chapter, we will have a short review as an introduction to magnetostatics. So everything that you have learned uh, in your basic uh, electromagnetism, we'll try, uh, we'll try to make a short review of that in this lesson. So in your basic uh, electromagnetism, uh, we have defined the field of electrostatics as the field where we are studying stationary charges, so charges at rest. So by stationary charges, we mean that the electric field is constant with respect to time. So the partial derivative of the electric field with respect to time is zero. Now, when you go to magnetostatics, uh, similar to electrostatics, we will be dealing with stationary currents or what we call steady state uh, currents. So currents that are steady with respect to time. So meaning their magnetic fields are actually constant in time. So the partial derivative of your magnetic field with respect to time is uh, zero. Uh, magnetostatics is actually the first part of electrodynamics. So this is electrostatics. When charges are, are, are already moving, that's, what, that's the field called electrodynamics. And the first part of electrodynamics is magnetostatics. And the second part of electrodynamics is actually uh, magnetodynamics. When the currents are now uh, in a non-steady state or when the magnetic field is now changing with so in your basic uh, electromagnetism, you have discussed about the different sources of magnetic field. So of course you have a moving charge. So if you have a moving charge Q, uh, moving with a velocity V, then the magnetic field, a distance R from the charge is given by this equation. So it's a cross product of the velocity and the position vector. So R here is the position vector, the position of the field point. Okay, now if, uh, by the way, the direction of the magnetic field is uh, according to the right hand rule or follows the right hand rule. So if this is the direction of the velocity, then this is the direction. It curls around the direction of the velocity. Uh, take note but that if the charge is not moving, if V is zero, then it doesn't have a magnetic field, only an electric field. So basically this charge now will now have uh, two fields, an electric field and a magnetic field if it's moving. So in total, you call that field as an electromagnetic field. Now if, we, if the charges are now uh, moving as a group, such as they create uh, what we call a current, so if you have a current carrying conductor, then uh, the magnetic field is given by the law of BU and Sovar. So here, uh, I is, I would like to emphasize that current is a vector. It has both a magnitude and a direction. So that is actually not usually emphasized in your basic electromagnetism, but now we will emphasize that current is a vector. And similarly, it, the direction of the magnetic field follows the right hand rule. If this is the direction of the current, then the magnetic field curls around the current. That direction usually in cylindrical coordinates, that direction is the phi direction, the phi hat direction. As a consequence of the law of V and Sovar, uh, we can solve for the magnetic field of a current loop. So at the axis of a current loop, so a current carrying conductor that forms a loop, then this is the magnetic field. But this is just a consequence of the law of VU and so bar. So actually we will mostly be focusing on 
the law of Bio and Sovar in our uh, in this chapter. So uh, we now know that there are the source there are sources, there are different sources of magnetic fields, uh, which comes initially from a moving charge, a moving electric charge. Now, how do you uh, explain the magnetic field of materials? Okay. How do you explain the magnetic field of a permanent magnet, for instance? So, the basic source of magnetic dipole or magnetism in a material is the electron carrot loops. So, electrons moves around the atom. Electron has a charge and it's moving in a loop. So, you can basically uh, call it a current loop. And a current loop has a magnetic field. So, the direction, it, again, it always follows the right-hand rule. If this is the direction of the loop, this is the direction of the magnetic uh, field. So, since most or since all of matter are composed of uh, atoms and electrons, so basically that explains the magnetism of a material, such as the magnetism of a permanent magnet. So, it's due to the electron current loops. Or usually we call that magnetic dipole moments. It's magnetic dipole moments. So with respect to the earth, the core of the earth actually contains uh, ions of iron. Ions of iron. So this is, these are ions. These are charged particles. And since earth is rotating, then these ions form current loops. And this becomes the source of our planet's magnetic field. So it's because of the current loops in the core, due to the ions in the core that are rotating with respect to the axis of the Earth. So, what happens now? So we know that a moving charge is a source of magnetic field, a current carrying conductor is a source of magnetic field, a current loop is a source of magnetic field. So what happens if you expose these current loops in a magnetic, sorry, what happens when you expose this source of magnetic fields in an external magnetic field? So there will be a magnetic force. So if you expose a moving charge on an external magnetic field, then that, uh, then that charge Q, that moving charge Q, will experience a magnetic force F equal to this one. V cross B. So it's maximum when the, the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And it's zero if the velocity is parallel to the magnetic field. So there will be no magnetic force experienced by a moving charge if it's moving in parallel to a magnetic field. It should be, uh, it should have a, an angle with respect to the uh, magnetic field. Now, <clears throat> if this moving charge is exposed to, an, to both external, uh, external magnetic and external electric fields, then the total electric force experienced by this charge is what we call the Lorentz force. So basically, this is what we call an electromagnetic force. So QE is the electric force, QV cross B is the magnetic force, and the combination of those two is what we call the Lorentz force. So if you have current carrying conductors, they are a source of magnetic field. They have their own magnetic field. But if you place them in a uniform external magnetic field, then you will get a magnetic force. The current carrying conductor will experience a force due to the external magnetic field. Take note that B here is not the magnetic field of this current I here. It's external to the, with respect to the current. And if you have a current loop, if it's in a uniform magnetic field, then the total force is zero. So that's actually what you learn. But later you will realize that if the magnetic field is not uniform, then the total force is not necessarily zero. And in a current loop exposed to a magnetic field, there will always be a magnetic torque, which is equivalent to the magnetic dipole moment of your current loop crossed with the external magnetic field. So we will be discussing... Uh, all of this in this uh, chapter. So we will actually start with uh, a moving charge in this chapter.
So that's it for this lesson, an introduction to magnetostatics. And we will be just be diving deeper into these uh, introduced concepts in the later uh, parts of this chapter. So that's it, and I will see you again in the next lesson.